Hello everyone, welcome to this Newton Law exam question. So what we have here is a, well we've got two objects that are connected and we are moving across a surface that is rough, so there is going to be friction and they're not telling us that there's constant acceler, there isn't like a constant speed or anything like that and then they've also given us friction. So they tell us that the friction force between P is going to be 2 newtons and then for Q it would be 1 newton. The first question, state Newton's second law. So we know that Newton's second law is the one that talks about F net equals to MA. So it's the one that has something to do with net force, mass, acceleration. Now, of course, your teacher might use a slightly different definition. Each textbook is slightly different, but the one that I see most often is this one over here. So the net force acting on an object will cause the object to accelerate in the direction of the net force. This acceleration is directly proportional to the net force and inversely proportional to the mass of the object. Right, so moving on to question 2.2. We are asked, now this is quite interesting, I don't see this too often, in fact I hardly ever see this. They are asking us to draw a force diagram, normally it's a free body diagram, so that's quite weird. And they only want the horizontal forces, not the vertical forces, so that's super interesting. Now it's on the 3 kilogram object, so when it's a force diagram you actually draw the object as a little box instead of using a little dot. Okay, now what are the different forces acting on this object? Well there's definitely some type of applied force acting on the object and so that would be like that, and so you can just say 20 newtons. Then there would also be some type of tension force in this rope which would try and slow the 3 kilogram down, let's just say this is the 3 kilogram. We don't know what the value is, so we'll just say Ft, you might just say T for example, each school is a little different and in your final exams in matric for example, um, there are multiple ways that you can answer the question. And then of course there is a bit of friction, so if these objects are moving to the right, then friction would always try to slow us down. So there'll be a bit of friction down here, so we show it where it's happening, and so that would be friction. Although we know how much it is, so we can say 2 newtons over there. Now some of you might be saying, Kevin, what about gravity? What about normal force? Those forces are there, I agree, but they have asked us for only the horizontal forces. Moving on to 2.3.1, calculate the magnitude of the acceleration of the 3 kilogram block. Right, so I'm going to show you guys a nice strategy on how you can solve Newton law questions when you have two objects connected like this. They typically going to ask you for tension or acceleration or something like that. So what you do is the following. So step one, you're going to draw a free body diagram of each object. Step two, use F net equals to MA on each one. And then step three, it'll usually be a simultaneous and usually that'll be to find acceleration and tension force. Okay, that's usually how these questions go. So what I've done is I've just gone and copied the diagram so um, we can have a bit of space to try this out. So remember what we said in step one, do a free body diagram of each object. So I'm going to divide my page in half and so we're going to start with the one kilogram object and let's do a free body diagram. Now we need to choose an overall direction, so it looks like we're going to the right, so let's just do the right as positive. And so well, what I mean by that is if we're choosing right, if we're saying that the system is going to the right, then this object is obviously also going to the right and then this object must also go right. Okay, that's very important, especially when the question is on a table and you've got like a block 
and the one is hanging off the table, what a lot of students get wrong in those ones is the direction. So for example, they'll say that this object is going this way. And then for some reason, they'll say that this object is going that way. And then they get negative answers and weird answers and it just doesn't work. Okay, so we are gonna assume that this entire system is just going to the right. So if we were to do a free body diagram on the one kilogram, we've obviously got some tension force. Some students ask me, is this 20 Newton acting on the one kilogram? No, it's not. It's, it's not touching the one kilogram. So this will be, um, it's only this tension force over here. Then we know that there is a bit of friction. So that'll go to the left. Then there's a normal force. You might say N. And if I say Fn, don't panic, it's okay. And then there's gravity. And that would be it for that one. Then we go do a free body diagram of object number two. So that's a three kilogram object. So with the three kilogram object, we've obviously got some type of applied force. So I'll say Fa. Then we've got a frictional force. You could even put in 20 if you wanted to over here. Then we've got a tension force and we've got a friction force. We've got gravity and we've got a normal force. So there we go, step one is done. Draw a free body diagram for each object. Then step two, use F net equals MA on each object. So remember we chose, we said that we, we are gonna assume that this entire system is going to the right. So then if you had to use F net equals to MA over here, so we can just say F net equals MA, then it would be FT as a positive and then friction would be negative. You see, because friction is pointing left, whereas FT is pointing right. That's very important. And then you could say MA. Now with the three kilogram object, we are also, remember we're still moving to the right. So you would say that it's the applied force minus the uh, frictional force, minus the tension force. You see guys, so for different objects, the tension force can be positive and negative. And then that will be equal to MA. Then you just go ahead and you fill everything in. So, so FT, we don't know what that is. Then the friction force acting on the one kilogram was one Newton. The mass is one and the acceleration we don't know. Then for this three kilogram object, you say, uh, sorry, 20, that's the applied force, minus its frictional force of two, minus its tension force, well, the tension force, it's the same for both, and that's equal to three A. And so there we go. Remember earlier we said that step three would always be simultaneous. And the simultaneous is normally to find A and T. And so now you can solve this however you like. I mean, there's so many different ways of doing this, but I mean, I think the one way that a lot of students like to do is we get FT alone for both. So this one will be FT is equal to A plus one. And then this would be 18 minus FT equals to three A. So if we get FT alone, then that would be 18 minus three A. Then because these are both FT, I can make them equal to each other. And so we could say A plus one is equal to 18 minus three A. And now we just solve. So if we take the A's to the left, we would get four A. And on the right, we would get 17. And then A should eventually equal 4.25 meters per second. And then if you wanna be technically correct, we could also say to the right. Now, the last question is just to calculate the tension. But now that we've done the simultaneous, finding the tension will not be difficult because you can just, uh, you can plug it into this equation or plug it into this equation. And so if we maybe plug it into this one, then the acceleration is 4.25 plus one and that's gonna give us 5.25 Newtons. And there we go, guys. Thanks for watching this one.